Yeah, Matt, thanks for having me. No problem at all, you're welcome. Um, really, really happy to be here. And um, as uh, before the interview, you asked me, what do I know about whiskey? And I said, basically nothing. <laughs> and so I'm really curious uh, where you will uh, tell me and obviously the, the yeah. German viewers about, yeah, I mean, a pretty decent, big whiskey business as far as I can see. I, I, I thought like New Zealand is a very, I mean, New Zealand is a very young country yeah. in terms of whiskey-ish. Uh, I was at Matt Thompson's still yeah. yesterday and we talked a bit about the, the history of yeah. um, New Zealand whiskey and that there actually is a lot of history mm -hmm. going back, but in the current stage of today's whiskey world, New Zealand is not really the type of country yet that people would, have, would say that is something when I think about whiskey. Yeah. So how did the whole story work out for you guys? How did what made made you or what was the initial idea for you to say I want to make whiskey in New Zealand? Okay. I think for us it's uh, it's kind of the culmination of a long journey. Um, I've been in the whiskey industry for twenty seven years, um, so a lot of years, a lot of them over in, in big Scottish global whiskey companies. Uh -huh. um, we've been living... What name of you? <laughs> oh, Lemorongi, Tullibardin, yeah, places like that. Um, so yeah, but, uh, but you know, we moved to New Zealand as a family in 2013. Um, and it was kind of probably up 2014 we said we we're going to stay here permanently. Yeah. Um, once we'd taken that decision, it was kind of, okay, what shall we do in New Zealand? Um, I was still traveling backwards and forwards every every eight weeks to Scotland and, oh, and back to Europe, which was quite crazy. Um, I think really in 2015 we said, look, okay, look, if we're staying here permanently, let's do something over here, let's make some whiskey. Um, and at the time there were no real whiskey distilleries in New Zealand, um, certainly not of any size kind of thing. Um, so I think our vision was, okay, how can we go about putting New Zealand on the map as a single malt producing nation um, on a global scale? Yeah. Now, obviously global scale, that meant building a distillery with scale. Um, and so from, from the start, that was the whole, the whole plan here. And to build, build a distillery that had big enough um, to grow a global brand. But uh, that was the first point. And the second point as well, it was, uh, we have a real ethos here in the distillery of no compromise in anything we do. Um, it's all about making the best whiskey we possibly can with no shortcuts, no compromise. Um, we're not looking at cost, we're not looking at yield, we're just looking about how we can make with the best possible process the best possible single malt whiskey. Um, so I'll take you through a bit in a bit the different things that we do to, to allow us to achieve that. Um, but yes, yeah, so we built the distillery in 2017, we started distilling at the end of 2018. Um, and we were very much under the radar because we didn't produce any white spirits, we didn't yeah. produce any founders casks, we didn't sell any private casks. It was all about just building up the stock for the brand. Um, so we only launched our brand in September of last year. Um, so it's kind of six months in at the moment, six, seven months in. Um, and we've only just started communicating. So we've launched uh, domestically into New Zealand, we've launched internationally into the UK, France, Germany, the US, China, Taiwan, um, Australia. So yeah, we're just starting to get the, starting to get the brand out there. Cool. Interesting. Um, so when you, you come from, but you, you were basically educated then in the Scottish whiskey industry, yep. as you said. Um, so do you have a, like a Scottish approach? Because I feel that... No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, stop, I'll stop you straight away. It's like, it's like yeah. we are, we're not making Scotch whiskey in New Zealand. So yeah. we, we are making a New Zealand whiskey and we're proud of making New Zealand whiskey. You know, we're a Kiwi company. Um, we're now you know, New Zealand citizens as well, so we are a Kiwi operated uh, business as well. Um, and it's all about making a New Zealand whiskey. We're a new world whiskey, we're not an old world whiskey. Yeah. That's really important for okay, us. Okay, okay. Now, when I say about, when I, when I, when I talk about um, this, I may basically mean for me there's two schools in whiskey. There's an American yeah. school, which is like grain based, column still, virgin oak based, okay. and then yeah. there's the Scottish or Irish way of making mainly copper pot um, based, mainly malts, mainly um, used cask-ish. That's yeah. where for me... So, so, so our, our, our process is, so we, we use, the reason we built the distillery here in Pocono is because of the water. Yeah. Um, so we have a, a water source below us, which collects the water from the surrounding volcanic hills. Oh, okay. um, and so we will pump that water directly into the plant. It's very, very rich in iron and manganese, so fantastic for, for distilling. Um, the second reason we built it here as well was because of the climate. 
Um, so Paul can notice the scene when he drove over the Bombay Hills, we're surrounded by a volcanic range of hills. Okay. Uh, we're in a valley almost beneath below sea level, incredibly humid, incredibly hot. Um, and we have maturation levels off the charts. I mean, we're evaporating nine and a half percent a year, uh, which wow. is you know, inc that's incredible. That's incredible. a lot. Like, that, that, is, that is a lot. Like, you're almost up there with Taiwan and India. Oh, we are up there with India and Taiwan. So, yeah, yeah. Three, and a, three and a half years in, I've lost 30% of my barrel. It would take me 15 years to do that in Scotland. <coughs> that's rough. But that. But does that mean you're, you're getting a quicker extraction yeah. as well? You have a bit of a quicker... We, we get, we, we get. you'll never see, uh, unless it's a very expensive one, a 10-year-old malt from the Falcon Whiskey Company. Um, you know, I think we're, we're getting an incredibly, incredibly mature whiskey after three and a half or four years yeah. um, that is sitting out there with you know, the, the best whiskies around. Like I think you know, I saw Whiskey DE did a some sort of tasting and they do that um, competition each month where they give the, the gold, the silver, the bronze and the fourth place. I think the fourth place was Ben Rick 16, the third place was Aberfeld 18, the second place was Paul Cunha Discovery yeah. and the first place was Glen Scotia 18. So I'm kind of going, we're obviously batting in the right... Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the right in the company right. to be in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so I think, yeah, we, we're getting this real quick maturation, which is great. Um, but I think more importantly than that, we're, we're getting a different maturation. So if you think about in Scotland where you're getting, you know, uh, a very slow maturation because there's very little movement inside the barrel because the temperate and the dryness and the, the high pressures, etc. Um, our liquids bang, 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 bang like that. But what we are doing is we're not getting as much as the soft oak tannins. Uh, in Scotland, over a long maturation, the soft oak tannins will replace the, the vibrant fruits of the new make over a long period of maturation. Um, we're not having that long period of maturation, so we are getting the sweetness and smoothness of the quick maturation, but we're staying very fruit forward. Mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of new world whiskies the same. Think Indian whiskey, think Poor John, think people like that. Very fruit forward as well. Yeah. I think that's a characteristic of, of new world whiskies, which is pretty cool. When you say new world whiskies, what, what, what is your definition of that? Uh, mind, yeah, old, old world is, is Scotland. Um, Japan's probably somewhere in the middle between yeah. old and new. Um, old world would be Irish. Uh, new world is just about everything else. Would you say America is old world too then? American single malt is new world. Yeah, okay. I, I'd say. Ah, okay, I get what yeah. you're coming from. Yeah. <coughs> when okay. you're talking about single malt whiskey, yeah. Yeah, okay. So a bit of a like a progressive approach. Yeah, I think about Westwood and things that they're doing and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, oh, I think it's no that progression. Yeah, yeah West progression, is, which is uh, good. Westland is really good as well. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So um, if yeah, we you can sort of walk me it like mind wise through the process. Um, yeah. And we'll do some pictures afterwards. I'll do some filming okay. maybe. Yeah. And show you guys. Um, Maybe I'll insert that afterwards. Brilliant. Definitely the pictures, obviously. Um, but just walk us through your okay, cool. uh, production process. So we've got, um, so as the process is concerned, we batch distill everything. Um, so we bring our grain, so it's New Zealand barley that we use. It's grown in the, uh, the north of the South Island, um, malted for us in, in the south of the North Island. Um, the malt barley we use is Laureate. Um, so we will bring that in in big bags of 550 kilos. Um, as you'll see, we'll hoist that over the mill, we'll mill through that in about 25 minutes into our half ton mash tun. Mm -hmm. We use the traditional three waters, first water at 66, second water at 80, third water at 90, the third water being recycled for the first water of the following, of the following mash. Yeah. Um, we'll do a very long recirculation of the wort to try and get the wort as clear as we possibly can. Um, we'll then do a slow transfer of that to the fermenters. So we will ferment for 80 hours. Okay. So it's a long ferment. Yeah. Um, obviously our primary fermentation is finished at about 40. We double that to allow some secondary fermentation to, to start. Um, we'll then do a slow transfer of the stills. We have a double still, double pot stills. Um, we have a 3,800 litre wash still and a 3,600 litre spirit still. So the, yeah, so the spirit still is oversized to allow us to do two wash distillations for a spirit distillation. Yeah. Just to be a little bit more sustainable on the, on the energy side. Um, wash distillation will take about five and a half hours and will take us up from 8.9% to about 26% alcohol. Um, for the spirit distillation, that's you know, a real point of difference with ourselves, um, is we distill incredibly slowly, but really incredibly slowly. Um, so we will distill at about two and a half to three litres per minute, okay. which is crazy slow. 
typical distillation speed would be 10 to 20 for a, a typical double distillation. Um, the reason I do that is I'm trying to create as much reflux in my still as I possibly can because I'm trying to make a sweet and smooth spirit. That's the yeah. sort of whiskey I like. Okay. Um, by only putting a little bit of steam on, vapors rise and fall about down, vapors rise and fall about down. What it's also doing is, is increasing my ABV just simply because of the time I spend in the still. So I'm probably sitting somewhere between a double and triple distillation because uh -huh. we will start our spirit collection at 77% alcohol and we'll stop at 72. Okay. Whereas a typical double distillation, you'll go up to 68 and down to 62. Mm -hmm. um, and our, our cut as well is very, very small. Um, so we'll, a spirit run for me is eight and a half hours because I'm distilling so slowly. Okay. And I'll be on spirit for an hour and 40 minutes of that, that's all. Collecting the hearts. Okay. So again, it's a very small cut. It's all about making the best whiskey we can, as I was saying, with no compromise. So it's, it's, it's going slowly. It's not about yield, it's about, it's about the product. It's all about making the whiskey fit for drinking before it goes into the barrel to let the barrel enhance the whiskey, yeah. rather than let the barrel cover all the Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of our ethos and our... Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Cool, yeah, I can't wait to try it. Obviously not, to, not today because my nose is more than absolutely to locked, but... Um, might help with the cold. Uh, yeah, but I have to drive later on. <laughs> uh, I have to talk to uh, your your guys in, in Germany uh, from. Uh, you said come up, come Kamakesh, Kamakesh, yeah, Kamakesh. yeah, Florian. I'll take you up on that. <laughs> um, I'll give you a call. So maybe we can do like a nice uh, definitely uh, review video about your stuff. Um, yeah, if you want to do a virtual yeah. tasting as well, yeah. we can do that. Just happy cool. to do it. Okay, interesting. So yeah, really like proper. Whiskey distillery with the uh, goal to build like a, uh, like a real big brand that can go outside of New Zealand. Yeah, I mean, we, we've uh, like I said, we're distilling. Yeah, our capacity of the distillery at the moment um, is sitting around a uh, hundred thousand over a year, uh, just over. Um, we're adding on some fermenters next year, which will take us to a quarter of a million. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're a decent sized, by far the biggest distillery in New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, but uh, kind of decent size, even on the on the kind of craft, the craft global scale. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, interesting. Cool. Yeah, that was a good run. I think we're like t twelve minutes. We already have covered the cool. main grounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just just thinking, what is interesting for me or might be interesting for we can, people. I can talk about what else we do on the site if you want yeah sure cool um so yeah so something which makes us you know something which is all part of this no compromise approach that we've got as well um is about you know, making sure we control every stage of the process um so obviously we do all our, our our milling mashing distilling on the site we do all the maturation on site as well um, we'll mature in a, in a number of different barrels from the, the first four bourbons from the US to the virgins to the, the New Zealand red wines to the STRs to the broadcasts etc. Um, but what we also do as well, we do our filtration and bottling on site as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of took it one step further as well. So I went, okay, we've done all this, what's left is the barrels. Yeah. Okay, so we've actually built New Zealand's only cooperage. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. on site. Wow. And we have New Zealand's only Cooper who we brought over from Scotland as Jesus. well. Um, so we've started making barrels out of native wood, out of interesting stuff like that. So yeah, just to try and do things a bit different and innovate on that sort of thing as well. Awesome. That sounds really interesting. I asked uh, Matt Tom Thompson yesterday if there is any law or any regulations in New Zealand. Yeah. He said sort of yes or yes and no. You know, kind of. It's in the process. So we, we've written um, a number of the distilleries, including Matt and myself, have got together. Um, and kind of said we need to write the legislation. Yeah. So we've written the rules and we've agreed the rules, but it's not legislation yet. Yeah. So we've got to take it yeah. through the legislation. Yeah. So the rules, I mean, it's not, it's not, we're not reinventing the world, um, but it is, you know, uh, copper pot stills, it is single malt, can uh, only produce in a single distillery. It's a single malt has to be bottled in New Zealand. 
Um, but the interesting thing is we're saying it has to be aged in wooden casks, yes. not oak casks. Okay. Um, and it'll be a minimum of two years in New Zealand. Yeah, so you have a bit of a, bit of a, <coughs> a slightly bigger range of, of uh, wood choices. Yeah, we'll be allowed to innovate yeah. a bit and, and do stuff like that. That's great. Yeah. And, and any any thinking about age statements or like I mean uh, minimum age yeah, maturation? Two years. Two years. Two years. Yeah. Two years. So we're going to two years. The reason we're doing two years is it's the same as Australia. Yeah. And because we are getting such a quick maturation because of our climate. Um, kind of two years. Obviously, if you want to sell it internationally, if you want to sell it in Europe, it has to be three anyway. Yeah. Here at Pocono, we don't release anything before the age of three, um, but it's just to allow a bit more flexibility for the smaller distillers who want to sell locally in the domestic market to try and get them a bit of cash flow as well. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like sounds like a decent idea. I mean, because if you look at like um, <coughs> American-made whiskies, for example, like I said, you know, if you use a column and fresh oak, you can easily produce whiskey that is. Finish after one or two years, yeah, completely. but um, so you you stick to the three years, yeah, role basically. Everything here is a minimum of three, yeah, yeah. Okay. Typically, our whisk is around the age of four, but we're releasing yeah. in New Zealand years, which is a bit like dog years, yeah, yeah. okay, awesome, cool, okay. So, yeah, that, that basically answers the question probably for future plans about, about the, the Cooper because that's something really is Exciting for yeah. having a distillery and yeah. your hands on the barrels. I mean, that's, that's like it. a like a dream for for the distiller, basically. Yeah. Uh, so Mike, who you've met already, he's a master cooper. Okay. So he, we brought him over from Scotland. He arrived in October last year. Uh, he's fourteen years of cooperage now. So, kind of teaching him to still, distill at the same time. Spot on. Yeah. That's good. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Any any other ground you want to cover? <laughs> No, I think that's. Um, I mean, obviously, the the type of whiskey that we're that we're making, um, the type of whiskey we're making is a very sweet and smooth whiskey. Um, we're very very fortunate that I think yeah here we we do seem to have um, a very fruit forward whiskey in New Zealand anyway. Um, our new make spirit, and as you'll try later on, it's uh, it's incredibly fruit forward with some lovely notes of citrus, grapefruit, passion fruit, which are notes that you don't actually normally find on a single malt whiskey. So actually we've got something which is a little bit different and allows us to differentiate from new world as well to old world, I think, which is which is really cool. Cool. Fantastic. Yeah, great. I think I think that's basically it. I think that's that's, that's our interview covered. I'll definitely uh, insert a couple of uh, shots from the distillery in here really? because there's a lot of a lot of interesting stuff to see. I already have a peek at the pot stills. They look fantastic. Let's go for a wander around the whole plant. And uh, we'll definitely have a look around now and uh, cool. Put that in there later on. And uh, <coughs> before, okay. obviously, before we um, before we do that, I will say goodbye to you guys.